Breaking real estate news. Breaking real estate news. It's Friday the 13th. And a full moon. And every real estate thing that could happen is going to happen today. Just be prepared. Yep, if you are at, um, if you are staying at any Camp Crystal Lakes, be on high alert this week for <laughs> hockey players. Oh, right. and you know what? We should do, do a sound check. Who is watching right now and can tell us they can hear us? Because we have some newfangled microphones. Yeah, do these microphones make anything better? Who is it? Hi, Brad. Can you can you tell us? Can you hear us? <laughs> oh, you must be able to hear us. Laugh out loud. Brad, can you hear us better, Brad? A bit better. The closer we can need. hear you. All right, good. All right. All right. Does it sound better? Is the sound quality better? Because I feel like the ten dollar microphones I bought are supposed to be a um, a uh, oh. awesome addition to our show. All right, all right. Okay, let's see. Okay, great, great. And sorry, it's um, for some reason Nicole's phone is kind of dark and we can't really read everything. So yeah, I, I apologize. Know. We're not going to say hi. To, we're not going to be able to say hi to everyone. We got to get this figured out one of these days. I think it's because I'm getting tracers from the light ring because it's so bright it is this bright morning. Today. Yeah. You know we can't adjust that, by the way. Well, listen, with these new microphones, I am like tied to this table, so I'm not moving again. <laughs> so, all right, welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you, thank you. We've got a great, awesome. I always say that. Great, awesome. We've got a terrible show for you guys today. We just figured it out like two seconds ago. Not true. And um, it's not going to be good. You might as well tune out now. Whatever. I wrote the show. This is the show I wrote last week uh -oh. and we, I didn't get to do. So, okay. Yeah. And, oh, and big thank you to Jeff Lyons for doing the show with uh, Nicole last week while I was gone. Especially last minute. That was awesome. So, That's cool. So big thanks. I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Jeff, I did hear... Jeff kept it clean too, which is, you know, <laughs> yeah, not okay. like Jeff's normal show. I did not hear, that he's a big cursor, but... I did hear a rumor that he did a show later on his own. He was like, yeah, I was on the Nicole and Craig show. I'm going to be the new Craig, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's Craig 2.0. I like it. it. He did a great job. It so thanks, Jeff. All right. So September is Realtor Safety Month. And even though you could be watching this any day of the year or whatever, mm -hmm. um, Realtor Safety is September and it is September. So we have a show for you on Realtor Safety, which we have done before a couple times, but it's always very important and... So we've got a show for you about that. Ugh, what is up with you today? What do you mean? You're kind of like you're kind of choppy, like not knowing what to say. One week off, and you're all like blah blah. What? One week off, folks. I'm, I lost. Ugh. I lost. I forgot how to do it. Ugh. All right. So we start with number five, and then we go backwards. All right. Start with number five. <laughs> we start you. with number five. What opinions? What options for personal safety? Okay. These are some. These are some easy ones. Okay. A self defense class. I think you should carry pepper spray. You have a taser on here, but I think you mean a stun gun. I don't know if tasers are commercial or are publicly available. I don't know. Can you what, buy a taser? What's the difference? Well, a taser is it, well. It's my and I might be wrong about this, but a taser is the one that like police officers have. They shoot the two little electrical. I just hit uh, my microphone. Yeah, I think I meant stun gun, but yeah. like you have to touch somebody with a stun gun, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't know if what's legal in Indiana though. Does anybody know? I don't know. Well, you can also, you can have a conceal and carry permit if you want to carry a firearm, which by the way, I do recommend taking safety classes. I know there's a lot of ranges around in Northwest Indiana where you can take firearm safety classes, which if you weren't in the military or have any special training with weapons, uh, like I do. Uh, <laughs> I knew that was coming. I was waiting. I was waiting for that. If you don't, a big shout out to my uh, airborne paratrooper brothers. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, 82nd Airborne, thank you. Um, so if you do not have that, I say go get that. I mean, it's it's going to probably cost you 100 bucks or 200 bucks or something like that to take a basic safety class, and that could save your life. I think just in general, I know a lot of people have seen, I think there was something in the news lately about a realtor, I don't remember what state she was in, but she was doing an open house, and she was attacked at an open house, and she did have a concealed carry. Me, I'm definitely afraid of guns, so, I, you know, I don't know. Um, I have been around them all my life, but it's never been an option for me. But I think some of the other, you know, like self-defense class, I definitely think that's something, um, especially for women, a good thing to learn how to take down, you know, a dude that's like 300 pounds. Like, it's kind of awesome, right? And then the pepper spray option, I think that's an easy one. You can go, like, right now, go to Lowe's, go pick it up, and, uh, and just grab some spray right off the top so that's easy to get yourself, you know, protected right away. Yeah, I think at the very least, you know, having pepper spray handy, like on a key, you know, or something like that, or even have it in your hand, especially if you're meeting someone, it's dark, you've never met this person before or something like Don't that, which we try to avoid those scenarios anyway. 
don't get the pink stun gun or like the pepper spray. Don't get the you yeah, know get, like get the, the pink one so your your attacker can even feel like haha you got you got pepper uh, sprayed by a pink pepper spray. But I think it makes it more obvious. So like when I meet a new client um, that I haven't met before, I will have that pepper spray in my hand while I'm opening the lockbox or whatever, right? Um, and then we're going to talk about some other ways to keep yourself safe on showings too here in a sec. Remember that breath spray that you used to get the banaca or whatever? Remember that yeah. stuff you spray it, like make fresh breath or whatever? Don't ever get that confused. Don't get it so it looks like that. <laughs> Who even has banaca anymore? I still have some. No, do no. you? You probably no, do because you never it, used it. I don't even know if it, it's probably like super hazardous, right? No. You need like a mask so I can't smell it now. Yeah. Because you don't use your banaca every day. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. I forgot to brush my teeth. Apparently, <laughs> it's not true. Okay, can we move? Can we move ahead now? Yeah, because All we're right. rolling into number four with kind of what I was saying with the peppers. Number four: Let clients walk ahead of you. Oh, uh, see, I do the exact opposite of this. You're going to throw your customers in harm's way. That's because you're a dude with military training. It's totally opposite for us who don't know how to protect ourselves on a daily. Oh God. On a daily basis, I mean, thank you for your service. Um, <laughs> yeah. On nice a daily try. basis, we don't know how to do those kind of things. So, you know, it's always a good idea to let the client in ahead of you. Um, most of the time, I don't think there's somebody sitting and waiting for you in the house. I think it's more that you're prepared, to, you know, for shady people that are you're meeting at the house, right? What if your client is a, is a woman <clears throat> and you're showing the house to them? If you have military experience, you go right ahead. No, I'm saying you. No. Me? Yeah. As a woman? I still let them go ahead of me. <laughs> what if they had See, a partner? I always, I what, al listen, what if they had a partner break in and they're sitting in the house waiting for you? Woman goes in first. You see what's going on. You walk right out. Super safety. Safety. Always let know. somebody walk ahead of you. It's on the realtor safety tips. For is Sarah. it really? Yes. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with that one. Yeah, it is. We're just going to have to agree to disagree, everyone. I, I think, yeah, we well, are. I always do this. I'm not this. doing Kung Fu or Krav Maga or whatever that is. <laughs> Krav Maga. That's awesome. Um, that is a tough one. Actually, there was a place in Maryville that teaches Aikido here, yeah. and, and I think it's a great tool. It's small joint manipulation and stuff like that. It's a great self-defense thing, um, and it's great for leverage. It's a leverage-based martial arts, similar to Krav Maga, actually. India um, has a, si a suggestion for some kind of silent alarm with GPS on it that goes directly to the police. Oh, that's cool. But I didn't see the whole thing, so I don't know what it is. And uh, I was told by... Joe Wazalek at Ganire that they're like NAR is coming out with a free realtor safety app that it might be available right now. So maybe check on realtor.com or you know NAR's website and see if you can find not realtor.com, sorry, but NAR's website and see if you can find that safety app. I believe it's a free download or, or search the app store. I, I think the other part of number four was let someone know if you're holding an open house. Like don't go and hold an open house at like six o'clock at night on a house that's like rural or you know in a subdivision that doesn't have people right next to you and not let another agent, your husband, your spouse, whatever, let them know that you're holding an open house so they know when to hear from you. Yeah, I think that's very important. Uh, I use a I use Google Calendar. I share that calendar out with like the owner of our company, Bill. I share that out with him. So if if for some reason I disappear on an appointment or something like that, Bill can always because I put all my appointments in that calendar, so Bill knows exactly where I am at what time. So it's easy to kind of track those things. I, and I think that's just a good safe plus it's organized to have all your appointments somewhere you know so you don't miss appointments i mean we do a lot like you know we'll have agents if i you know somebody will say i don't feel comfortable you know i'll say okay pass it off to one of the guys or um you know let us know i've been on the phone with agents before while they're with somebody because they feel uncomfortable you know what house are you at so i know what house they're at you know we have access to all that when i was a single agent i would sometimes call our secretaries at the office it was during the day and i would say hey i'm at this house call me in 10 minutes. There's all kinds of different things you can do to make sure to let somebody know where you're at. Yeah, definitely. Okay, moving on. Now, I know we've done realtor safety before, but here's one thing that we have not ever done. Yeah. Um, and this is a great a great idea here is cyber safety. This is something we don't think about a lot, but what do you what do you think about cyber safety? What are some tips to keep keep you safe online? Well, I think in general pepper spray. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, right. What else? <laughs> Yeah, don't touch your keyboard and then your face after you do pepper spray. Um, so cyber safety, I think a lot of us nowadays, we're more, it's more prevalent with the wire fraud. You know, the update of this year with the purchase agreement, you know, with the specific section about wire fraud, most of the title companies now are sending encrypted wiring instructions. Um, I think that's really prevalent this year. Um, 
you know, making sure that you're improving your password complexity, like your password shouldn't be password, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, That's or, <laughs> you know, things like that. Shouldn't be your kids' names, shouldn't be your pets' names, stuff that people can find off of social media. Um, and then double protect your passwords. Like I have Gmail, Facebook, all of those. You can set up double protection now. So if somebody tries to log in under your login, it will actually ask for a text code sent to your phone before they can log in. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Very cool. So you got nothing to say? Oh, yeah, you're no. on technology. No, guys, technology. So. Yeah, yeah, that's your, that's your game and, and you nailed it. But you need to think about that because I know we've all seen the I've been hacked on Facebook. You get an email from an agent that you worked with six months ago that says I've been hacked on my Gmail. Like, don't open anything for me. Um, you know, if you get something like that, the first immediate thing you need to do is just change your password. It'll log you out of all of those. Anywhere you're logged in at, it'll just log you out immediately out of everything. Which So then you can start to figure out how much damage has been done. But at least you're protected now going forward. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent advice, Nicole. Thanks. Excellent advice. Okay, moving forward. Number two, know how to use your CentraLock app for safety. Nicole, this one <laughs> sounds like you again. Every time you go into a showing, you're, whether you know it or not, in your CentraLock options, you have the option for a safety, right? You can put in three different people. It might be more than that. I normally at least put in three people. Um, that will allow them to know where you're at. What'll happen is the it'll come up and if you don't say you're safe, it will text your uh, location and um, what time and everything to those people from the app. And trust me, it works because I didn't realize when the app updated here recently that that safety is a little bit different than before. And so mine was going off like crazy because I couldn't figure out when it was coming up. So I had all three of my contacts, hey, are you okay? Hey, are you okay? And then I had one, because she got it twice, calling me and saying, uh, you know, tell me something about you because I want to make sure, you know, you're okay kind of thing. Where is that in the center lock? So... Because I didn't see it. It is... Is it maybe showing time? My oh. settings. So if you <laughs> hit the three up in the corner and then you hit my settings... And then you'll do agent safety, and then you can enable it if you don't have it enabled now. And like, then, like me. <clears throat> yeah. That's why I couldn't find it. It will allow you to add your people in there so you can put their name, phone number, all that stuff. So it'll text them uh, your location, which is nice. So do that if you have it disabled like I do. So enable. you have to do nothing. You don't have to download an app. You don't have to do anything. You just have to turn the settings on in your app, and you already have a safety function built in. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. All right, I don't know if there's anything more we can talk about on Centralox app. Probably not. It's a great app. Use it. Yep. I'll look at it one of these days. I don't know. Um, okay, so number one, our number one tip I would say for realtor safety, and this has changed throughout my career because in the beginning, we would show a house to anybody if, you know, we, we didn't care if they were even a real buyer. Like, oh, really? You want to see a house? No problem. We're out there. You know, and that was back, I'm saying, early 2000s. Uh, I think when the first really like seller's market that we had, you know, in 07, uh, right before the recession hit, like that was crazy. And, and it just, things were moving so fast. If a buyer wanted to see something, you were just running out and showing them. Plus back then, almost everyone could get approved for something. They were doing no income, no asset verification loans. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. It was like a wild, wild west time. <laughs> but um, I can't make that sound. I want to so bad. Which one? You know, the, the know, gun draw you. sound uh -huh. at the wild west thing. Like yeah. I can't do it. Nice, nice, nice. Can I whistle? Like the whistle. I can't whistle if I'm, if I'm smiling. So, <laughs> All right. So um, so know what we're saying, I guess. The number one is know who you are showing property to. Yes. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Like I have a subscription to Spokio for my whole team. So they can actually input the cell phone number. That's yeah, it right no. there. I had to wait. I knew when she started talking, my smile would disappear. Whatever. Um, so you can put their cell phone number in a Spokio and look them up that way. Our CRM connects whatever they can pull from social media. You can also Google them um, with the city that you get from Spokio. There's all different kinds of ways to do it. You know, most of us are good people readers because we're in sales. If somebody's red flagging you, questions are asking, something feels uncomfortable about it, um, you know, be cautious. Dig, 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 you know, before you go on that showing um, so you actually know who you're meeting. Yeah. And I hate to, I hate to, it's, it's not a joke, but you know, your life could depend on it. So yeah. sometimes 
you know, do do some research if you're not sure. If you if you get any kind of, I always say trust your gut too. Yes. If you if you get a gut feeling that something's not right, you know, let your talk to your managing broker. You know, just just let someone else know. You know, be smart, be safe. You know, there's no way you can't take back if something bad happens. You know, you can't really. You can't go back and get a do-over, you know? Yeah, I'm Pick never... a mulligan. I'm never mad at one of my agents if they take a lead and they're like, Nicole, I, I don't know. The guy gives... You know, the guy, the girl, whatever it is, gives me the creeps. Okay, well, I get you, so don't go show them. Let's see if we can get another agent take them, tell them what happened. If not, then we just don't service the lead, and that's just kind of the way it is. Like, you have to trust your gut. It's going off for a reason. Don't ignore it. That's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. What are some tips on things that maybe agents should not do, like... Um, like open carry a firearm to showings or something like that. Like what are some tips you, or what's something that you think we're, we're going, we're giving you an extra tip right now. We're oh, giving you he's a putting do me not. on the spot for the extra tip just so you know. This is how the show gets good, Nicole. Well, I think do not in general, like when I go on a showing, I do not enter the house without the client. I never go in unless the client shows up. So I never pop the lock unless somebody's there with me. That's one. That's a good tip, yeah. So unless, you know, so at least you have somebody else. You have to assume you're in that case the client isn't the shady one. So I've never felt comfortable doing that. I think cuz I don't feel like safe being in the house all by myself. Well, and I think some realtors I, I know realtors have done where they would show up for a showing, the buyer no shows and then they go show like they walk through the house themselves anyway just so the seller thinks the showing happened. I think that's, I don't, yeah, I agree with Nicole on that one. I say don't do it. You know, there's no reason. Ooh, I got another one. Okay, all right, well, go ahead. That's pretty much, everyone can wrap their brains around that one. So buy or no shows, somebody else drives across the house and says, hey, I'd like to see that house. You have no idea who that person is and you decide to go in that house with them. I know agents that do that. Do not do that. You have no idea Ooh, who they are. That happens a lot on, that happens a lot on hot properties like that where people are driving by and just, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't do that. Especially if realistically you're, you're representing someone at that moment. Yeah. So when someone else comes up and then you're going to, you're going to have competing clients and stuff like that. The best thing probably would be just to refer that client out to someone else or. I don't know about that, but. Or, you know, take them and say, hey, we have to make sure you're pre-approved first and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't I agree think, with that either, but. No? No. Okay. Mm -mm. Well, then just, then what do you tell them? Tell them forget it. You just say, like, you have to have a confirmed showing for the appointment, so you can't do that. You have to talk to the seller. That's it. Easy peasy. Fine. Blame it on the seller. Fine. I don't... Yeah, blame it on the seller. That's, that's all you can do in that situation. All right. All you right. Know, that's you don't want to show somebody you have no idea who they are with, you know, Iowa plates and the car stolen or something crazy. Why do I pick on Iowa? I'm just saying. Because <laughs> I was thinking Illinois, but we have too many Illinois plates, so. <laughs> that was the other I state I could think I of. I got gotcha. you. Idaho, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana. Those are the two Indiana. things, yeah. Those are the two things that come to my mind. Anything you got? No, I got okay. nothing. So I wrote the whole show and gave the extra tips. Cool, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of what they call color commentary. Is it? Is that what they call you? I don't know. Mm. No? The, the eye candy? The comedic relief. The eye candy, yeah, uh-huh. I asked him if he wanted some concealer before the show. You know, I was putting it on, and he's like... She said, I look tired today. He said, do I look tired today? I said, absolutely. You want some concealer? That's really how that conversation went. And I, I chose not to have concealer. Yeah. Well, he's got, like, a tan going on because he was, like, in Vegas and stuff, having fun. Like, you know, the rest of us get to stay here and work. It's I'm fine. recharging my batteries. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Well, anyway, you guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the show. All that kind of good stuff. Or, or I hope the microphone. Watching. I feel like super technology today because we have a light ring and a microphone now. Yeah, so. the light ring is blinding us today. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I think he's got it turned up on, like, high. I do, but I always do. Nah. I thought I always did. I don't think so. All right. Anyway, thanks, everyone. Enjoy uh, the rest of your day and have a great weekend. See and be you next safe. Friday. Be yeah. safe. Friday the 13th, full moon. Be safe. Is a full moon too? Yes. Ooh, werewolves. Look out for werewolves, everyone. And I think they were like, they were uh, doing trailers for the new It movie. I was like, why do you got to do that on Friday the 13th on a full moon? Creepy. All right. I saw well, it on anyway, my Facebook channel. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys.